what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. All right. Thank you so much, MYB, for coming back with us here. Episode number 141, Entrepreneurship, Real Estate, Trending News. There's no business like minding your own. I'm your host, Champ Ron, and uh, we've got a special guest uh, here with us today. Uh, Jeff, you know, I, I've, um, you know, as I looked at your background, um, as someone that's a, a background in banking, I was really amazed at your story of, you know, how you came up and how you got into your particular industry. Um, you, Jeff Vermont, is am I saying that right, Vermont? Yeah, yeah Vermont, it's fine. Yep. Vermont, okay, I want to make sure I said that right. Now, I asked him before we say that just again. Just go by Jeff. I just go by Jeff. I'm, just go by Jeff. No sirs, no none of that. Just Jeff. There you go. Yeah. So you know what? When uh, people say sir to me. Uh, I tend to look for my dad, so. Yeah, <laughs> you know, same way, it's like, where's dad? Yeah, exactly. yeah, he's the only Brooks that's earned sir status, uh, yeah. as far yeah, as uh, I'm concerned. But uh, but Jeff with Cocoon, which is an interesting name for your business. I was intrigued uh, by that as well, Jeff. But let's get started because I'm, I'm curious to know, and I think the audience here that's listening is gonna be curious to know. Uh, tell us about yourself and how you got started. Sure. Well, uh, I, I actually grew up in Rye, New York, and uh, I was a tennis player, and um, I was uh, sent to, I got to, lucky enough to go to school in California for one year of high school, and then I was recruited onto the USC tennis team. I was in the top, uh, top ranked tennis team, and um, I played at SC and then graduated, and my first job was uh, with Cobalt Banker, which now uh, CBRE, biggest right. real estate company, in, I think in the world. And yeah. uh, I was a, a what they call a runner, which meant that I barely got a salary and I just ran around for guys <laughs> learning the real estate business. Right. Then I got lucky enough to uh, go work for uh, Tom Selleck's dad, Bob Selleck, from okay. the movie strip from from uh, you know Magnum PI and Blue Blood. Right. Right. And, and that was kind of a fun thing. We had a saying about the Selleck's. There's no bad looking sellers. <laughs> they were all great looking people. Right. Nice right. people too. I, I learned a lot from Bob. I learned how to um, do the right thing in business. And uh, you know, there's some more stories of that. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to be on my own and go to work on my own. So I went from, from being a real estate salesman to actually becoming a real estate developer. Gotcha. Okay. And so you become a real estate developer. Are you doing mostly commercial work or residential or a little bit of both or? Yeah, so I started out uh, principally doing office buildings and industrial buildings because I knew that, that part of the real estate business and then ended up uh, doing some housing. And we were, at one point, we were one of the largest builders in Santa Barbara. We're located in Santa Barbara, California. And, okay. Uh, we did great. I was always interested in even in my buildings, I was always interested in the tenant perspective. So I didn't look at it and today the same way. I don't look at, at business like it's a rivalry. I look yeah. at it like it should be a, a, a teamwork. Like they need something, we need something. How do we work together to make yeah. that a good opportunity? And that's brought me a lot of success by having that attitude. Like it's not us versus them. It's like, how do we work together so we both profit, we both do well together. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff. And so, you know, when I look at your business in terms of um, your know, data sharing, so you know, on that point you just made, when you think of working together and you think of data sharing, that's typically adversarial, right, between the consumer and business. So it's kind of you know, man versus machine a little bit. Um, exactly. Talk to me how your business model kind of bucks that somewhat and is a little bit more collaborative in that process. Right. Well, because of my history, and you now know some of how I see people and how I, um, I generally feel about everyone. I mean, everybody's a human being. Everybody has needs, right? Yeah. Uh, nobody, you heard earlier, I don't think anybody should be, think they're more special because they have a billion dollars in their hands. I'm, right. I don't think that way. Um, I got into the, the technology business about 10 years ago. 
and I can't say it's a smooth ride. It's been a really rocky road. I've put in a lot of money of my own money, and I, yeah. I don't go ask investors for money unless I'm pretty sure I have something that of value. And, and I'm also one of these people that perseveres, so I don't want to lose my investors' money. I care more about them than I even care about myself. Yeah. And that's just my attitude. Like I like to have a great record. So about nine years ago, I got into technology space because I got frustrated with all the things that were happening onto you, like you know, viruses, malware, uh, people following you around the web, getting ads that maybe you don't want. Right. And so I actually dove into the business had no experience whatsoever, uh, couldn't even turn on my computer, and started learning stuff. And I don't code, but I, I know a lot about you know the back ends of, of computers. Yeah. Um, and built a browser that is probably one of the world's safest and most secure browsers called Cocoon. And it's called Cocoon okay. because you know you wrapped yourself in our browser and you were totally protected. No one could see who oh. you are, no viruses yeah. on you. Um, you, we stored everything in the cloud, so there's nothing on your computer. So literally, it was like a cocoon. Okay. And we did that for eight or nine years. And and the lesson I learned there was couldn't figure out how to make money. We bet, made a brilliant product, but when we got out into the marketplace, we were beaten up by VPNs. People would pay for VPNs. We were free. I couldn't figure out how to make any money. So about a year and a half ago. It dawned on me I knew how to build browsers, and then there was this whole thing about data. And I started thinking to myself, you know, I'm not sure that the world is really fair with the way the data is handled. I mean, you do all this work, right? You look up things, you search things, and right. what you get is quote unquote free. But then there's a whole bunch of money being made off of you, and you're not really getting a part of that. Right, exactly. Right. And I thought to myself, that just seems unfair. It just, it just didn't seem right to me that we shouldn't, you're doing a bu bunch of the work. You're actually typing out, looking for things. You should be rewarded for your work. And these companies, you know, Google and other, others are not helping you. They're not giving you something. Sure. They're giving you access, but that access costs them nothing. And so while they're collecting your data, they're either selling it or they're using it in some fashion to profit off you. And guess who's left out? Yeah. You are. Yeah. All the consumers. Right. So I decided it's time to do something about it. And that's the kind of guy I am. And so for the last year and a half, I've been working on a strategy and now have launched a desktop and shortly we'll be launching our mobile apps that will allow you to actually take your data. You can say, yes, we, we anonymize it as best we possibly can. We filter like your financials, your medical, and then we go with your permission and sell it and you get 80% uh, of the profit and we take 20% and we skip the Google um, because we have our own browser and our own app. And then we pay the user through PayPal and they get cash. No Bitcoins, none of that, just cash. Just straight cash. Okay. So, so instead of, you know, take using me, for example, Jeff. So instead of me right now today, I go into Google, I search for, ice cream and everything about ice cream probably you know catered to my location and whatnot is provided to me as as data from computers all over the world right and so then google's taking my information and selling it to whatever companies are out buying that information right now i, don't, I get zilch for that sure. so what yours uh what you guys are doing then is you're making an agreement with me that says hey ron um, with your information, filtering out sensitive stuff and that sort of thing, uh, let's take your information, let's package that and, and take it out to, I guess, the marketplace or to companies. They buy it for a dollar, um, and then you're doing a revenue split, essentially, with me for doing that service for me, which then allows it to be through your browser and that sort of thing, uh, allows it to be, you know, I have more confidence in it being secure and I have more confidence in who's actually participating in that transaction versus today where when I go out on Google, I have no clue in hell who's participating in that. And the one that's getting 86 out is me. So it's kind of like the NCAA athlete, right? Um, you know, yeah, I'm out there exactly. and I'm, I'm generating all the revenue because I'm the quarterback at USC, right? 
Um, but I don't get zilch, you know, I'm eating Raymond noodles at, at the dorm, but I'm making USC in the NCAA and everybody. You didn't go, you didn't go to USC, did you? No, I didn't. No, because uh, no, no. I went there. So yeah, no, I yeah, I remember you saying oh you God. went there. So I used oh, yeah, to. That's right. <laughs> but the, uh, uh, I think you're yeah. right. The only so I want to make some some splits here. So we don't we don't force anybody to use. I think the best search engine in the world is Google, and I like the best. I I don't mind if you use any any kind of search engine you want. So there's two parts of this. There's a search engine, which you look up the information. And then there's the browser. And so the difference is you look up the information through search. So Google does see the searches. But then when you go to the site, that URL that you stick in, it comes through our browser, which is just like Google. It looks like Google. It works like Google. We built it off of Google. Um, but instead of, of that information being passed to Chrome, it's being passed on to us. We're taking that information and sending it to the advertiser we're actually sending it to a broker and the broker then sends it to the advertiser. And the plan is to build on this. So right now you can do between $20, $15 and $20 a month to $100 a month. Our maximum is 100 that you can get paid. And the reason why it's 100 is because we don't see how you humanly can do more than 100. And we have people that try and scam us and you know they'll set up a machine and they'll do you know a million pages. And then they want to get paid, you know, two hundred thousand dollars, and we know that's humanly not possible. Right. Right. We want this. So the purpose of this is to help people. But if people are scamming us or trying to scam us, they ruin it for everybody else because all of a sudden the advertisers say, "I don't want to work with you because you have people who are misbehaving and they're misusing your product." So how do you manage that? Because I imagine again the unscrupulousness of trying to capitalize, right? becomes then a motivation uh, sometimes for some people. So how do you manage preventing your company from them being scammed and impacting the relationship? Sure. So we have some, some set standards that says a human being can only do so many pages a, uh, a day, right? Or a month. And we set that. And once you start going over, we limit you. Even if the advertiser, the advertiser may say, we're not paying you. And therefore, we may not pay that user because the advertiser can tell that you're using some sort of servers or a bot or something like that. Uh, but if you do get paid, uh, we limit it to 100 because we know that you can't go over, um, you know, 10,000 pages a, a month or 12,000 pages. It, it would be really hard to, I mean, we see people doing 100,000 pages in a month and we know that's just not humanly possible. Yeah. So we we do ban people. I mean, we we have a couple ba people that have banned it. That your, your first ban is thirty days, and then if you continue to abuse the system for everybody else, then you know we we will ban you. So we we don't want to. We want people to behave, and if somebody wants to call me up, the CEO, and complain, uh, I'm happy to hear from them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so as you work through that, Jeff. Um, you know, how to take me back to the early days of when you started this. So you first get out, you know, was it a concept that people were easily able to grasp or did it require a lot of education by you and your team to get people to, to understand the, the business model? Yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, more and more people are understanding the business model, but all it really takes is for you to say to them, you know, your, your data is valuable and you're not getting paid for it. And lights turn on like, oh yeah, I'm sitting there. And see what the misconception is, which is what the big companies have led you to. We'll give you quote unquote free, and you know if you're free, you're actually the product. You didn't pay for anything, so a VPN right. would be your safest thing. And even, I hate to say this about VPNs, but they're even known for selling your data after they've taken your money. So yeah. you gotta be a little bit careful about the VPNs as well. But I just realized that this is something that we can give back, like for instance, we'll have a nonprofit side to cocoon where we'll a nonprofit can sign up and ask people to donate to them this is a perfect time to donate your money you're surfing money to somebody and we'll add to that uh, as a way of us contributing this is much more of a, a of a social idea than it is big business idea I, I i really want people to to get what they deserve now our new app for instance in our app although it's you you, know, you can't use it today because we're all kind of stuck at home, but we also uh, build in a geolocation. 
So now all you could do, if you didn't even want to surf through us, if you just put the app in your pocket, uh, you'll make money off of that app because it's going to show where you've gone. And if you don't mind selling that data, it's going to pay you. And as I said, we don't believe in Bitcoin at this point. Right. I want the people in Nebraska or anywhere to just go, well, this is easy. I don't want you to be a tech guy to have to figure this out. Like, how do I get Bitcoin? I'm, a, I'm a, just a plain spoken guy that really wants you to get paid and I pay in cash. There you go. And so I guess, you know, my mind's kind of going in some different places with this because is this in working with you guys, Jeff, is this a, you know, I, I guess, is this a, a you know, like an investment money making opportunity? Like what I view this from a consumer standpoint as this is just kind of free, almost just kind of like house money where, you know, if I looked at over a calendar year, if I were doing business with you on a daily basis and I'm visiting these pages and kind of going around and I'm not sure what the average number of pages someone visits in a day, but you know, if, if you're maxing at a hundred dollars, it seems like I could do very well potentially, you know, if you looked at doing business with you guys over a calendar year, is, is that true? Would I look at it that way? Or is this sure. like you, or is this more of kind of a, kind of a social good from your standpoint? And it's not necessarily a money maker for me, but it's an opportunity for me to take ownership of, I guess, my efforts and my you know, identity, I guess, in, in some senses. It, it can be both. For instance, if a company said to us, look, we're going we're gonna to sign up and use your browser. And we gave them 80, think of it this way. Let's say they had 40,000 employees and they were all going to use Cocoon and it became a, a center for them. Sure, the, uh, for 40,000, if you're, if you're doing you know, $30, $30 a month or something like that, that's a nice piece of revenue at the end of the year for your company. And you didn't do anything other than switch your browser or switch your app, right? For an individual, right. which is really what I'm after, I'm more after helping people make a little extra money, and this is going to grow. So right now, I have one advertiser. As we get more and more people, the more people I can say, hey, would you like to buy this data? I've already had a couple major companies come to me and say, when you get to a million users, we like to buy your data. So now I can turn this into a profit center for you, and all of a sudden, maybe it's not $100 a month. Maybe it's $200 or $300 a month that you make still it's not you know your salary but extra three hundred dollars in your pocket i mean who doesn't want that for doing nothing yeah uh, well you, if you think right. about it like you say over 12 months if you were doing if you were at that point right and right and you were doing two or three hundred dollars i mean three hundred dollars a month over 12 months is what thirty six hundred dollars yeah I mean, and think of your family's doing that so think it's any day over 13 we don't take youngsters under to, under 13 but you could have a family of three or four eventually doing four, five, six thousand dollars a year yeah. off of your own data. And what I love about it is, you know, I have nothing against Google, uh, but I just think that the way this has been set up, where it's an all or nothing, I just think time needs to change. Yeah. And, yeah. and, I, and I've made enough money in my own life that's like, yeah, why don't we change the spectrum here? Why don't we do something different? where everybody gets to participate instead of just one giant company. Yeah, absolutely. And, and let's stay on that piece of the topic and unpack that a little bit, Jeff, because obviously yeah, we were talking kind of before we went live about kind of what's going on today, right? And our, our quarantine, socially distant, yeah. COVID-19, coronavirus uh, world that we're living in right now that we know shall pass um, here at some point and then there'll be some new normal. Um, talk about that, that notion of um, you know, kind of, you know, uh, uh, kind of decentralizing the power um, when you talk about data, because that's kind of what I'm, I'm hearing is you're, you're, from a socially good standpoint, you're decentralizing that power and, and spreading that amongst people. Um, let's compare that to a, kind of from a macro sense in terms of today's environment. Um, it, you, you, what will be your thoughts in terms of that happening kind of in our country? that um, what's going on right now today um, could lead to this decentralizing of things and um, power kind of getting spread out amongst, instead of power being hubbed in government and hubbed in, 
you know, these large corporations that um, people start learning, you know, people like yourself, people like myself and others start figuring out ways from an entrepreneurial standpoint to decentralize that and start creating more layers of, of power uh, in a sense and people taking ownership of things like you say that they're a part of or they do every day. Yeah, it's the power structure, and I, and I think the world is changing. The, uh, I, you see the kids that are much more sort of resolute to it shouldn't, power shouldn't be held just by one group, but it should be spread out more. And I'm a fan of that. I mean, I, I believe in capitalism, so I, I, I think you should be able to go and make as much money as you want to. I hope you don't abuse that because that's where um, it's kind of a bad thing. Yeah. And I've seen it. I've seen a lot of abuse of that. So. I hope that's not where we go, but I think spreading this out and giving people an opportunity and not having, you know, I, I knew I was doing the right thing because Google, when I went to put up an ad on Google's platform, they denied me. And I thought to myself, well, that's one of the best things I've heard all day because they obviously get it that I'm going to cut into their profits eventually uh, as we spread around the world. And, and I'm happy to do this because as I said, if you, if you didn't do anything, if your computer did everything for you, you didn't have to type, then I might say, yeah, you know, you don't deserve anything. But who's sitting behind the the, the computer doing all the work? You are. Yeah, they're the people. Right? No, it's not that you. I shouldn't get a profit. I'm taking what you would normally get in a business, a 20% profit. That's kind of the going rate, right? Right. You're getting the 80%. Uh, and I've, I've got a broker who's taking some percentage of of, of the data, but he's selling the data, but you're getting part of the action. And to me, it's just in, it, for, particularly for the web, this is just a better way of going. And, and I see this pull push where people just have to make as much money as they possibly can. And I just kind of look and they go, I always learn in business, leave something for the other guy. You yeah. don't need to take everything. Absolutely. You know, and, and I adopt that same philosophy as well. You know, I've always felt that, you know, when doing business with people, um, again, you have to be able to manage your greed and exactly. the whole that manage their greed. You know, Gordon Gekko um, uh, in the movie said that greed is good, right? Um, and it is until you get to the point, like you said, of abuse, We're right? The part of power and when um, your greed exceeds um, or circumnavigates the other guy, you know, having a piece, right? So, you know, greed is fine. It's fine to want as much of the pie as possible until you start, you know, getting to the point where you don't want anybody else to have any pie at all and you want to have it all and then you want to ration it out to everybody um, and just own the control. That's where you said, like you said, capitalism becomes, um, you know, such that it, it doesn't work at that point. But no, it's an I interesting see, thought. I see it all the time in business and I see people who, who have that attitude and, for instance, if I make a deal with you, if there's paperwork done or not, I'm going to stick to my deal. Yeah. And it's just the way I, I operate. I think that we should be fairer to people. We should be nicer to people. I mean, here's a time where almost every note I say to somebody, think about this. I don't do this very often. Be safe. Yeah. Right. And all of a sudden we're saying to other people, be safe. Yeah. Right. Just Humanity simple. in a way is learning, is working again because we're, we're distancing ourselves, but yet humanity's working where we're helping each other as best we possibly can. So the worst of it is the virus and the best of it are people saying, how can I help you? Or can yeah. I, you know, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and even though it's social distancing, it's not social disregard. And, exactly. and, I, and I've been saying that for some time here since this started is, um, yeah, I think we're getting, we're, I think what comes out of this is we get somewhat back to the basics. Um, of being human beings and not just being these entities that go around with all these self-interest. I think we get back to, you know what, the, uh, the guy across the street is a human being. You know, we may not agree on, you know, different things. We may be, you know, blue or red or, or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, again, those three things I mentioned earlier, um, everybody wants to do a little better for themselves, a little better for their family, a little better for their community, hopefully. And, yeah, no, I, I and totally if you agree. recognize that and respect that to the next guy or, or the next, you know, woman, um, I, th I think we'll be fine, you know, collectively. So, yeah, I totally agree. I, th I think actually, and as much as this is so painful, and you know, hearing people about people dying off from this this terrible disease, 
um, there's a lesson in here for us to be learning. And, and some of them are, we need to take, as Americans, we need to take care of better care of ourselves medically, right? Not just physically, yeah. but I mean, we should have our own medicines. Uh, we should have our own supply of this stuff. This is a real lesson that we should be learning. Yeah. And then the other lesson that we're learning is the humanity part. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing it in the firefighters and the responders. And uh, I, you know, it's just, uh, it's just kind of amazing to me how in this kind of situation we do pull together and we do become more humanity than we're just out here to make the biggest buck we possibly can. Right. And I've always been one of these people that, that have said, I had a business partner early on in my early career who we had a handshake and I made a lot of money off a handshake. We never even had any documents, but it was all about respecting each other and just saying, look, we're, you know, we're going to work together. And that was the end of it. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it, that's actually an old school type of way of, you know, those handshake agreements where your word was your bond and, and that meant something. Yeah. Um, and getting yeah. back to that, I think, would be uh, tremendous for us as, as a country and, and just as a human race species. <laughs> um, think of your, and think of how much legal, think how much legal savings you'd have in your legal bills, too. Oh, yeah. We, we put some, uh, some uh, law firms and attorneys out of business <laughs> that to go back to being human beings. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, so I do want to touch again on Cocoon because yes. I love the idea that people can make money uh, off of their own data. Yeah, you have to decide. And I, people, what people have to understand is, believe it or not, unless you're using a VPN, they're already taking all your data and using it. Right. right? They know all about you. And yeah. It, and otherwise, if you don't go use a VPN, or you could use Cocoon Secure, that's our browser, our other yeah. browser, that will make you invisible and is free. But, but to me, if, if, if you say, you know what, I'm not going to use anything, you know, I'll use a browser, but why not get paid for my data? And so that's, we want you to have control. I want to give the control back to you. You decide about the data so you could use our secure product and no one ever know what you're doing. Uh, I, I actually, uh, or you could, you can use our, our cocoon secure, our cocoon, uh, my data rewards and get paid for your data. Yeah, there you go. And, and then speaking of data, I know you mentioned the security of Cancun, um, but talk about just data security all the way around. I know for me in banking, Jeff, um, I, I was still in the industry when Equifax had their breach. And I remember going to a, uh, actually a credit union conference uh, in DC of all places. And of course, every politician had their 15 seconds of fame. Uh, with it. And of course, you could imagine at a credit union conference, they were just wearing out banks, right? And then of course, I've been in banking conferences where they wear out uh, credit unions. Um, but, you know, that was a, a kind of a big deal. And there's been other big ones, you know, Target and, and whatnot that have had these big breaches. Now, talk to us about that and just the overall status of data security and, and kind of where you see it going. I know there's a lot of, you know, fear talk. There's even fear now of the, the 5G towers that are being placed. And um, there's some rhetoric going on online that those are what caused the coronavirus and, and that sort of thing. But just talk to, talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, just data security overall and, you know, where you see it going, where you see it trending. So let's start with, well, I think we all both know this. Let's sort of start with, if you want to be so, uh, totally secure, turn off all your electronics, turn off your computer, uh, and go back to the Stone Age because that's where you're going to have to head. <laughs> right. From that point on, um, it's difficult. I mean, you see the hackers, the, they're encouraged, the, the Iranians, the Chinese, the Russians, uh, groups of bandits that are constantly trying to look for, you know, holes in the system. That's why there's, you know, if you go to the, the uh, Moscone uh, Convention Center in San Francisco, there's a hundred thousand square feet of companies selling you security. And, and that's not going to change because there's holes in the systems. I mean, the only, the thing I can tell you is we're, we've encrypted you to our servers so that you're, you can't be hacked in. There's no man in the middle. There's no way of hacking into, it should never, never say there's never because you know, that's what a criminal starts to think. Well, he said never. So I'm going to say right. it would be extremely difficult to do that. And then we pay through PayPal and we do that on purpose because we don't want, actually want to hold the money 
we want to get that into your hand through PayPal, which is a secure uh, place. So we try and do best practices for security. Sure. Uh, and so uh, we're always looking for this. I can tell you, we've built a, you know some a really great browser. We've never, I should never say this again. We, we have known of people trying to hack into us, but have not been successful. Yeah. And we use best practices, but overall, it's just part of the world. And it's kind of like, let me put it this way. There really isn't a lot of privacy out there. And so, sure, any moment your email could be hacked or, you know, you could be at Experian and they hack the, all those email addresses and you yeah. just have to go. It's just part of life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, essentially, I mean, it's you know, our, our lives are connected digitally um, and yeah. in more ways than one, of course. And so uh, it, it's today's life. It's to the, like you said, it's today's living. And so um, unfortunately, you have to accept uh, the fact that uh, you're, you're not able to, you know, properly really stay off the grid and, and that sort of thing like you could maybe, you know, decades ago. Sure. Um, and even then you were still, <laughs> um, you didn't think you were, but you, you always were. There's always some level of uh, uh, surveillance and, uh, and data being shared. Um, yeah, exactly. Right? So yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's the, the world, it is what it is today. And there's so many valuable tools that the web gives you. And you just have to be kind of prepared in your mind that, you know, even I am surprised when I got fooled, spoofed or something, and it's happened to almost everybody. And it's just, you know, it's human nature that we will, we'll, you know, you have to be careful on the web. Don't be gullible. Don't think because somebody's going to offer you a half a million dollars uh, for, you know, for you bringing money from Africa or some other place. Right. That's really true. So you just have to think about that. And then you have to put a little faith in these bigger companies that help hold your email addresses. And um, there's really nothing you can do about that because if they get hacked, they get hacked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, Jeff, um, you know, in, in a little bit along these lines, but shifting gears a little bit, um, talk to us a little bit about the, you know, the influence of family for you and for your business. Obviously, um, you know, I talked to many business owners and, and that's something when we talked about humanity earlier, um, it's refreshing to hear business leaders um, have an empathy um, for their teammates and for their employees. Um, and a lot of those have been impacted, restaurants and the hotel industry, Airbnb, um, people that are having to leave their families, healthcare workers and that sort of thing, college students being impacted, and, you know, uh, college seniors, high school seniors. Um, there's a lot of impact on family um, right now. And then a lot of discussion about family. And, and again, from that humanity, um, people having, again, a, a, a front of mind sense of that when they're making decisions. I tend to see that more and more and not just with the small business guy, which that always has been, you know, for the most part on the forefront, but even some of these guys and girls that are leading midsize and even larger organizations seem to be a little bit more, um, again, open to that mindset of how do I protect uh, my employees? So talk to me a little bit about family's impact on you, the importance of family to you and the importance of family to business leaders so let me start with uh how do i treat and i consider my family actually my co-workers i don't even call them employees they're co-workers they 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 get you know paid well um we give them a part of the action i mean we're a company that you probably i have people here who've been here with us in the real estate side for 20 years and yeah and they're not leaving they're going to retire with us and we treat them as family they have an emergency they just can go, you know, to take care of their needs. Well, I don't worry about that. Yeah. Uh, in this this period of time, uh, I have been lucky enough to be able to pay everybody in full. And um, yes, I'm losing money in my real estate business, and I will apply to the government and see what they give me. Sure. Nothing more important to me than taking care of uh, my friends, my family, uh, my family, my my kids. Uh, well, luckily, my kids are out of the house. So uh, we have to video chat with each other because, or we have to go outside and chat uh, with the kids because we're, you know, even though we're all being very careful, I'm, I'm probably at the most risk because I had uh, a bike accident years ago and uh, don't have a full lung. So I, I'm the one who's probably the biggest at risk. Uh, but it's time, in my opinion, that you pull together and, and I feel horrible 
for all the people who have been put out of work. Um, and I hope this, you know, I hope that A, what time the government should come in and help. Uh, and two, the lead business leaders should not leave their, if they can all help it, they should keep their employees paid, keep them working, uh, and then hopefully get some help from the government, which really means us. In the end, it's us, the taxpayers, who are helping other people. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. No, very well said. Yeah, family is extremely important. And I like how you refer to your, your uh, team there as family and friends. And the There's no one in my group. <clears throat> I'm, I am out a lot of money with my group, and it's like, it doesn't matter to me. It's the way it should be. Uh, we should take care of each other. I, I, even, I even ask people, don't come to the office. Stay home. Be safe with your family. Don't come here, because much more important to me that your health is good. I'll get you paid. Yeah, well, and that speaks a lot to your character. I mean, you know, off top, you know, Jeff, your character as a as a human being, as a man, and and as a business leader. Um, and hopefully, again, through this uh, process, uh, you mentioned the unfortunate pieces of um, sickness and death and that sort of thing. And hopefully that can be mitigated, um, but also hopefully that um, other business leaders will take on your spirit um, and the way that you've demonstrated that uh, empathy and that concern. Um, and like you said, your, 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 your people will go um, to the you know, thousands of degree for you when they know that you care. Let, let me let me bring up one point. So in the real estate business, and I, I just want people to realize there are people like this out in the. Um, I've had tenants now come to me, and I have lent, and I have lenders. The so lenders are always want their money and on time, and I've just told lenders, hey, you know, if I can't pay, you can do what you want to me, but I'm not going to go force some guy to write a check to me that can't afford to write a check as a tenant. I don't view my tenants like tenants. I view them as human beings that we have a severe problem today. Sure. And this is not normal terms where you made a bad business decision, right? right? This is times where you had nothing to do with this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, yeah, you were impacted by, you know, it's kind of like in the, in the game, you know, it's, yeah, you know, all of a sudden the field just comes up out of the ground, <laughs> you know, like exactly. you, know, you can't blame the quarterback for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, or a big hole just opens up in the ground. I mean, that's kind of just what happened, right? So it's completely out of everybody's control. You're right. Yeah, so you need to treat, I mean, this is just the lesson for people. And I, I hope people will carry this forward because, you know, to me, and I'll get on a, on a, I don't have a subway in Santa Barbara, but if I was on a subway, I smile at people, I say hello to them, they look at me like, you're crazy. And it's like, no, no, I'm a, I'm a human being saying hello to other human beings and I don't look at you like, you're anything else but another, you know, person on the on the subway. Yeah. Uh, well, see, so, Jeff, you need to come to to the south then, because see, here in Tennessee, where I'm at, that's the norm. Our southern hospitality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a, I truly, I think I'm like that. I mean, I love people, and th this is to me what I'm doing for Cocoon with Cocoon. To me, it's one of the greatest things I've ever done in my life because it's I can give back to everyone that uses them. If you don't use it, then that's fine. But everybody that uses this is going to get something back. Um, and to me, like, well, this is the best thing I've ever done in my life for people. Well, and, and that's, you know, that's an incredible testimony, Jeff. Um, you know, let me ask you this. Take me back to, and, it, and as we kind of wrap up here, um, take me back to one of your toughest days in business. Um, if you ever had that day, so, you know, some folks have that day or that week or that month or that year, Jeff, that they had really tough times and they almost say, you know what, I'm going to go back to doing whatever I was doing before. Uh, forget all this. It's just too much. Um, if you had that day or that time, you know, walk me through that. Um, of course, if you didn't, you didn't. But if you did, again, walk me through it and what helped keep you going? Because I think there's something innate in people um, when they, they're finding success and they find it even against obstacles or against challenges, whether personally or professionally. Um, and I think there's something that's just inherent within people. There's a certain level of tenacity, and certain level of kind of get up and go that's innate within people um, who then demonstrate that by going through adversity. Yeah, so I can tell you two things that have been really adversity. I grew up with a lot of adversity as a child. I was pretty handicapped in education and had some real issues. Uh, and somehow I, I persevered through it. 
But the, I would say one of the hardest days of my life was in 2008 when the market totally tanked. Sure. And, and there was a real estate market that tanked. And I had, um, I used to build a lot of office buildings and then I got into the residential. And all of a sudden I owed personally millions of dollars on loans that I had taken out to build housing. And that probably was the hardest time. I, I remember sitting in front of a TV, watching the market just tank, and yeah. hearing people talking about uh, all the hard times. And I had lost literally millions of dollars that had to figure out how was I gonna pay these people back. And I was one of these people that said, I'll pay you as much as I possibly can without wrecking everything. If you wreck it, you'll get nothing. Right. And so that would have been my darkest hours. And I can remember sitting in the dark, 11, 12, one o'clock in the morning, staring at a TV, watching, you know, the stock market in Japan or something tanking. And so that was, a, and I persevered through it. I, I, I stuck through it. Now, one of the reasons that here's a, one of the interesting parts, I pivoted from that business, right? I said, you know what, maybe I should try a different business and take my tenacity, take my perseverance elsewhere. And that's what this cocoon thing's all about. Yeah. Right. I took it and decided to do something else with my, my creative abilities, not to sit there and wallow in it and say, you know what, I'm done. I can't do anything. I said, no, I'm a creative human being. I could come up with something else that might work. And now I have something that's I think really fun and fantastic. Yeah. And you know, what, what's interesting about that is you reinvented yourself, Jeff, um, through a very dark time. And I was, a, I remember um, being a, I was a business banker during that time. And I remember the Goldman Sachs thing fell that, you know, we, we started hearing rumblings because, you know, keep in mind, you know, as a banker, we were doing, you know, and, and you probably remember this, we were doing one page application. I mean, to, to get a hundred grand from the bank was a one page application with no financials, no anything. If, if your credit score was like a 640, you were in. Yeah, I remember those. And it, it was only just, it was just cash flow based. I mean, if you, you know, if you brought in a dollar, we'd lend you 10 cents, basically, as long as you had the 640 credit score. Yeah, and yeah. so we were doing those. I mean, I remember there was a bank in our market that was doing 125% LTV um, HELOCs. I mean, the dog could show up with a dog house and get a HELOC on it, <laughs> yes. you know, in these times. And then I remember 07, 08 hit. And I took some hits too. Um, but I love what you said about, again, reinventing yourself and someone in a business that still allowed you to maximize your heart, the way you've, you've spoken on your heart, which in real estate, you, you existed to help people um, and the same in Cocoon. Um, so it, it took your overall kind of personality, but you were able to shift it in a complete different gear to reinvent yourself, which I think a lot of people didn't. A lot of people that I spoke to, like you said, whined and wallowed and um, felt sorry for themselves, felt sorry for everybody. And um, they did not do that. And so they just kind of stayed where they were and never really rebounded. Right. right. Um, so definitely kudos to you for doing that, Jeff. You know, I think it speaks highly of um, when someone can reinvent themselves um, in somewhat of a complete different industry. But it's still I, I still see it as real estate. You know, data is still, you know, it's, whether it's a property, a physical property, or it's data, it's still real estate, right? It's still taking up space. It's just a matter of what you're doing now is with digital real estate, you're placing it in a certain place and you're still able to help people the same yeah. way you help people with space physically. Right, right. I, the, my personality has not changed at all. And sure. my goals have not changed. I mean, sure, you can't be in business without wanting to make some money. But if you can figure out, which is what I've always done, I had some of the longest term leases. We used to do a tenant of what we used to call it, appreciation day, where we'd host a, a giant meal and thank our tenants, right? Thank these people. I knew a lot of people just on the, they would say, oh, you're Jeff Berman. And I'd go, yeah, and oh, what, you know, we love your buildings. You're, you guys are great. And I always tried to work with people because to me, that was more important than me having more money than anybody else. There you go. So yeah. Jeff, remember, Matt, thank you so much with Cocoon. How could we get the browser? How can people get involved with you um, that are interested? Well, first of all, I, um, if you go to try Cocoon, that's T-R-Y, Cocoon, C-O-C-O-O-N, 
www.ubiquitousmedia.com. That's where you can actually download the desktop version. Okay. Uh, and that's both for Mac and for, uh, for Windows. And then okay. shortly, uh, in two weeks, we'll be launching Android. So stay tuned for Android, and then hopefully a couple months from now, uh, iOS for mobile will be available, but we're taking one step at a time. And also, if you, if you have a nonprofit or you're close to a nonprofit, I would love to hear from you. Um, and um, and you, you tell me, Ron, what the best way is. And the reason why I'm asking that is because yeah. one of the things we want to do is we want to bring in nonprofits so that they can tell their uh, people that follow them and, and donate to them to use Cocoon and we'll donate part of our profits as well. So all of a yeah. sudden a nonprofit could end up with some more money in their pocket. Yep, excellent, Jeff. So what we'll do with that is, of course, I'm gonna reach out um, to some folks that I know here in the Memphis area that are in the nonprofit community um, mm -hmm. and have them connect with you um, and they can reach out to you directly. Um, I may just let them email you um, let them connect with you that way. The other thing MYB is um, what Jeff just mentioned is going to be in the show notes. So if you're connected with, you make donations to, if you work in a nonprofit or if you lead a nonprofit, I'd like for you MYB to reach out to Jeff and his contact info is in the show notes uh, as well as the site, trycocoon.com. Um, download and uh, begin using the browser for yourself. Please, please. Feedback with Jeff. Um, the more people we have, the more money we can make for you. The, the, yep. the more power I have to make great deals for you. And that's the, the truth of it is I have a lot of companies waiting and we get enough people, we can start bargaining for you. Yep, absolutely. And so, you know, great points, Jeff. And so I want to encourage people, make sure that you do that. Let, and let Jeff know you heard him right here on the Minding Your Business podcast. Uh, so he'll know kind of where you're coming from. Let him know wh what part of the country that you're in, uh, that sort of thing, so that you can connect with him. But uh, let's help Jeff and uh, his organization uh, by doing that. Download trycocoon.com, uh, begin using the browser. I'm going to do that too. Uh, so I can begin using the browser, make sure that you're secure, and then get involved with the organization and let's support uh, small business uh, around Great. the country. That's one of the best things we can do uh, today during these unprecedented and uncertain right. times, which we'll get through and we'll get back to socially interacting and that sort of thing, uh, everybody. But uh, Jeff, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. It's an absolute pleasure. You're just a, this is a great host and what a great show you have, and uh, it's really been fun to be with you. Yep, absolutely. I hope to remain con uh, connected with you. I'll be following up with you. Yeah. I, start I want to come have some of your uh, Memphis barbecue. I love yes. barbecue, so you take me to your best barbecue place, I'll come yeah. out. Listen, you look me up when you're coming this way, and we'll take you to all the good spots. Some of the spots aren't the most popular, but they got some of the best barbecue, man. I, I, I don't care about the best, best barbecue. That's there all. There you go. Jeff, listen, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, best wishes to you and your family, personally and professionally. And uh, if I could be a resource again, let me know. Great. Thank you. Look forward to talking to you soon. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Bye -bye. Take care. All right. So that was uh, Jeff Vermont uh, with Cocoon. Go to trycocoon.com and check him out. Let's make sure we support him. Uh, if you want to make a little money off your data, which makes all the sense in the world to me, make sure that uh, you reach out to him and check him out in YB. I'm your host, Champ Ron. This is the Minding Your Business Podcast. Subscribe, listen, share, five star, five star on Apple. Uh, that helps us be able to reach more people. And of course, we're brought to you as always by the Binge Podcast Network. Listen, enjoy the rest of your day uh, and the rest of your week. Be great. And again, be your very best for yourself, for your family, and for your community. What we do here is go back, 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 back.